Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bharti, and today we have with us Tracy Miranda, Executive Director of the CD Foundation. Tracy, first of all, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sapnil. Great to be here. Let's start with the continuous delivery. How would you define continuous delivery? Also, what about the CI part of it? Because when we talk about it, we always say CI, CD. Yes, for sure. So continuous delivery, we define that as it's a software engineering approach in which teams work in short cycles and they ensure um, that the code is always released at any point in time. Now, traditionally, people tend to uh, speak a lot about continuous integration and continuous delivery, so CI, CD. Now, continuous integration is uh, when developers regularly commit uh, at least once a day to a mainline and, and keep that mainline up to date. But I see continuous delivery as really this umbrella of all the practices you need uh, to keep that software ready to be released at any time. So that includes continuous integration, it includes uh, security features, it includes testing, and uh, yeah, as a general set of practices. Awesome. And if you look at uh, continuous delivery, uh, it, it's not a problem to be solved. It's already a solved problem, but it was a lot of patchwork. It was a lot of do it yourself. You have to build Jenkins and all those things. But then Spinnaker came, which eased a lot of things, and now we have a foundation. So can you talk about what role is the foundation playing in this space? So while we know a lot about continuous delivery today and we appreciate that it is really important because it makes such a difference to every business today, you know, not just software companies, but banks or you know, health healthcare industry. But what we find in practice is that the adoption of continuous delivery practices is super, super low. Like many people think they're doing it, but maybe they're doing some continuous integration and they haven't quite figured out um, how to get true automation. And then to top it off, um, what makes things even more complicated is very recently we've seen the rise of uh, like microservices and cloud native technology. And now while these give us huge benefits in terms of scalability um, and making it easier to, to work, um, you know, on, on separate parts of the application, that has also resulted in, you know, just increased challenges like a proliferation of environments and teams having to contend with all these different parts that make up an application. So the Continuous Delivery Foundation is really there to um, help support teams and organizations uh, in their adoption of these practices, both um, from the sense of, you know, taking advantage of open source projects in this space, but also uh, we look, we're working towards um, democratizing the best practices. And we actually have a, a very recent working group that's spun up to, to help anyone in this space get better at delivering software. You mentioned earlier uh, security and security is really becoming um, um, a serious concern. It's no longer an afterthought. Uh, mostly when we look at any hacks or systems compromised, in most of the cases, it's about unpatched software. The patches are there. In most cases, open source. The patch is there, but it was never applied uh, because most companies still have that engine model for, you know, when you have already deployed something on billions of machines, it's really hard. So if we make security as part of developers' you know, workflow, it becomes easier. So talk about the roles CD can play in further improving security. Yes, for sure. Um, security is a super top concern. And I think there are lots of different elements to this. So on, on the one hand, uh, what we want to make sure is, like we talk a lot about shift left of security, and really we need to be making sure the security professionals and the folks focused on security are really tightly involved with the, the rest of the team. So there's no silos. Uh, people don't regard security as someone else's problem. Security starts with the developers. And then as an industry, I, I think, you know, separate from how companies organize um, themselves around DevSecOps and building better teams, 
as an industry, I think it's really important that we work together to solve um, kind of the industry level problems. Like, I think you raise a good point there when you say, you know, in many cases, these patches uh, haven't been applied, but the fixes are out there, which kind of makes you think like, is security an, actually an outreach problem? Do we need to be better at telling people update to this release, it's super important, this is why you do it, and making sure we cut through the noise of all the different messaging they're hearing. And I think um, that's another example where um, something like the Continuous Delivery Foundation can make a difference in addressing these broad industry problems that we all have to kind of come together to, to tackle. And since we're talking about the problem, one more thing is that, you know, microservices, you know, they are, you know, everywhere. Um, but companies are kind of facing a, a challenge you know for the for the consistent release strategies on a scale and at times they're not prepared for it so can you talk about within the ecosystem or as part of the foundation itself what is being done uh, around solving the problem of continuous delivery for microservices that's a great question and we definitely have kind of the the big split of folks who are, you know, used to delivering uh, a monolith and they have their existing setup all geared towards supporting that. And then a number, and this is increasing every day, uh, a number of folks who are trying to take advantage of microservices and then all the implication um, that means. So one of the hot topics that's emerged for us is configuration management. Um, and how we think about this is before um, your application, the, the scope of it was very well defined. But now with microservices, um, you know, the definition of an application changes. It's a set of microservices. How do we talk about which version of each microservice goes into a specific app? And then how do we manage, um, you know, if we are continuously pushing code and integrating that. How are those different versions changing relative to each other and how are we testing that all together? So we've definitely seen configuration management as a really hot topic and people are looking at tooling in the space. Um, I think we have a, a couple of interesting projects that might be coming in the pipeline to CDF as well that will specifically help to, to drive visibility into this space and give people just better tooling to manage um, all the dependencies around microservices. One more thing, as you were saying, or talking earlier, that there are so many uh, projects or open source tools uh, for CD, which may also lead uh, to a problem of interoperability. So what, how, first of all, how big is it the concern for the foundation and what are you doing to kind of you know uh, increase interoperability within these tools? Yeah, so interoperability is one of those interesting kind of problems where if you're just working in your own organization, um, sometimes you know it, it's not really a problem until uh, perhaps it's time to adopt a new tool or add something into your workflow. But if we step back and look at the industry as a whole uh, and, and take a look across the whole landscape, at the moment, uh, it's hugely fragmented. There's a lot of tools doing similar things. It's very difficult for people to move from, you know, different CI tools or different pipeline orchestration tools without having to go through a lot of pain to figure out um, how how to do that. So it's a, it's a big problem because then also tool providers are having to kind of implement plugins for different systems and it's you know, kind of a waste of time and it slows down innovation when we could be kind of moving up the stack. So I think um, where we're at today, there's uh, a greater appreciation um, from, well, in increasingly end users as well about saying, okay, we want to simplify this. Uh, we want to find better ways for tools to in interoperate. And actually at CDF, um, one of the very first uh, special interest groups we had was an interoperability working group. And this is just a set of um, like-minded folks who got together and said, hey, as an industry, we should be better and we can be better and we're all gonna get talking and we're gonna figure that out. And it's a really good group because we've got the folks who, who build the projects um, like the Jenkins X and Tecton and Spinnaker 
And we've also got um, a lot of end user members represented um, and that perspective comes in. So uh, we've got folks from companies like Ericsson and eBay and they make sure that as the problems are being solved, they really apply to real world use cases. So it's, it's an open group and uh, people are welcome to join those conversations. There's a lot at the moment about maybe standardizing uh, interfaces or metadata, like why can't we have a standardized way to express um, the, all the metadata around a release or all the metadata around a set of testing results. So yeah, I'm really excited about what this group is doing and look forward to um, if they can really achieve this very, very difficult goal and just bring some consolidation um, around the tooling. Uh, one last question before we wrap this up is COVID-19. How has COVID-19 affected the uh, continuous delivery? Yeah, no, I think great question. Um, so it has definitely um, increased, like we've seen some surveys which say, uh, you, you know, it talked about what people were expecting to do in terms of cloud adoption and continuous delivery adoption. And all those numbers um, have increased in, in terms of the expectation of um, how they're going to accelerate that adoption. And I think it's become pretty clear to companies um, Things like the pandemic have emphasized the need to be more resilient. They've emphasized the need to adapt quickly. And they've emphasized that uh, most organizations are going to evolve to be very distributed. And so for all these things, um, continuous delivery practices work really well. They enable all those things and um, they make all the difference. And actually the companies who were already doing these practices um, have a significant advantage uh, in times like these. So um, it will be really interesting. And I think uh, one of the benefits we have as a foundation is that open source has always been about that collaboration at scale and in distributed way. So we're hoping we can take kind of all those lessons and marry you know, open source uh, practices to continuous delivery practices and really just make it easier for everybody to adopt them. Uh, it shouldn't just be kind of an elite few companies who could do it. It should be something that's possible and achievable for every company and every organization out there. Tracy, thank you so much for taking time out and uh, talk to us today about the foundation, continuous delivery, and I would love to talk to you again. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been my pleasure to share what we are up to.